This is uh, the first world, Harathansi, which is the largest and wealthiest community. Um, we have our queen, played by Nicole Kidman. We have our king, played by Ethan Hawke. His brother, played by Clay's Bang. And um, we have uh, young Prince Amleth, who then becomes our lead, uh, the fantastic Alexander Skarsgård. Um, this community <clears throat> really illustrates high status Viking clothing. Um, it has luxurious costumes. Um, a Queen Guthrin and King Orvindil definitely have the most evidence of high status. In Land of the Roos, um, the Vikings are dressed in a, with a more Eastern influence. So their tunics are linen um, and not decorated with tablet weaving to the same extent as you would see in um, Harathansi, which is, um, you know, tunics made of wool and decorated with tablet weaving. Um, there's a huge battle in Land of the Roos. We see our berserkers first in their, um, I guess, normal everyday Viking wear when they land, and then we see them that night in um, fur costumes. They have personas that are either wolf or bear, and Amleth has his own very special version, which is a combination of the two. The idea being that the wolf um, are personalities that uh, are intelligent and speedy, perhaps a bit more wily. And the bear is the brute force, the strength. And, and his is a combination of the two. And consequently, his costume was twice as heavy as all the other actors. Both of these worlds, Viking and Slav, is very difficult to research because there are not um, many surviving pieces, and they are literally pieces. There is no, there's not one complete garment, and there certainly is not one complete outfit in, um, um, for Viking research. So the Slav research um, <clears throat> sort of presented itself um, bit by bit by bit. It was incredible, actually, to be on set. You know, there is so much detail and so much energy spent on trying to, um, you know, make the costume sets, props, everything as authentic as possible. And then when you add to that the horses, the stunts, the camera work, it was really, you know, like being shot back in time. Fulner's character, unlike the king, his brother, does not have the same taste for uh, conspicuous consumption and wealth. He um, he works. He worked as a more as a foreman for his brother when he was at Harafensi, and here he works to benefit his family. He he's dressed well. He's dressed in high status colors, which at the period would have been matter root red or blue. Uh, blue created from all of this is, is plant dyed material. Um, so that would be created from woad or indigo. And the greens, which are from uh, Retzetta and indigo mixed. Um, I mean, really complicated and amazing um, material textile production. You know, it was, it was one of the commodities that Vikings um, really valued. Uh, it took a very long time to collect the wool, to spin the yarn, to then weave on these vertical looms that were uh, what the Vikings used. We see this in, in our research because there um, are so few uh, actual examples. Our research uh, comes from um, artwork at the period, so things that are uh, images that are engraved in metal or carved in wood or woven into tapestries. And so we tried to, uh, we did really uh, keep that in mind with the silhouettes. And it was pretty thrilling actually to, you know, research and research and then, and then get to the, the um, work of making all of these costumes and then come across a reference months later and think, ah, it's another example of, you know, the line of that dress or, you know, it's 
real geek stuff. We have sort of small side scenes that happen and they are with supernatural characters, magical characters. We have a Valkyrie, um, we have a sorcerer, and uh, we have a warrior king who is um, a mound dweller who uh, possesses the magical sword Dragur that Amleth must um, steal in order to be able to carry out his um, revenge. So the research and certainly the fabrication for those costumes was really fun and, um, and, and difficult. We also have a, 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 an area in the film called Place of Visions and um, that is, those are characters um, five um, performers who were dressed in clothing and armor uh, from periods ranging from 50 AD to 750 AD. And they're meant to be dead, so their, their distressing and breakdown was um, an incredible job. Plays Bang, who plays Fulner in Harafensi, uh, at the top of the film, um, Clays actually wears one of my favorite costumes, if not my favorite costume, it is for the assassination scene. He wears a shaggy cloak, which is, um, which actually was a commodity that um, Vikings traded. Its, its um, value came from the fact that it was made from the long hairs of the Icelandic sheep, the tog and that was woven into a blanket um, additionally to the, to the wool that the face of the blanket was made from. And so this rendered it incredibly warm, obviously really important in, in that climate, and um, waterproof. So for a seafaring nation, that was also very valuable. So these Verafeldir were traded as a commodity along with Vadmel, along with gold, along with silver, along with slaves. Ethan brought a, a fantastic masculinity to our king. Um, and he, he, he actually embodied the duality which I really um, was looking for. So a king that is rugged, a king that goes out with his retainers and, and fights alongside of them. And, um, you know, so he's got, the, he's got the rugged boots, he's got the rugged trousers, he's got... Um, you know, the, the work clothes. But then on top of that, he has the male shirt that is trimmed with gold. He has the helmet that has gold. He has gold on his drape, on his helmet. Um, he also wears a gold um, a coronet. At the period, um, there, there weren't kings per se. This, this sort of predates that type of monarchy. And so men of high status would have worn um, a tablet woven band that had gold woven into it. Um, but it was felt that more people would identify him as a king character if he had solid gold on his head. And so we went with a, um, a solid gold colored coronet. I went to the British Museum um, en route to, um, to view various rental houses in London and in uh, Rome and Madrid. And we didn't really find anything other than a bit of armor and um, footwear to rent because what we are doing was quite different than what has been done before. Many of these things, the Varafelder, the um, Amleth's tunic that he wears first off, in uh, Land of the Roos, um, pleating in apron dresses, um, all sorts of techniques. I would say they are potentially the first time that they've been used in film. So how cool is that? Hamir's character is the, the uh, pooler, which is like the um, king's, uh, the fool, the king's fool. Um, his costume is uh, based around 
uh, a find. It's, it's the Orkney hood. And it has, um, the original has an extraordinary wide piece of tablet weaving. And tablet weaving is, is a technique that is particular to Vikings. It is to produce trim. Again, it is, uh, does show high status because it is so labor intensive. And it's done with um, small square cards or tablets with a hole in each corner and the yarn is fed through those and then they're turned in different directions um, to produce uh, a woven uh, piece of trim. So this, this uh, extant um, example has a very wide piece of tablet weaving on it. And um, so it, it, what I did is I sort of took the tablet weaving from um, the original piece and applied it to the bottom of Haymere's, uh, the idea of it to the bottom of Haymere's um, Vendel era tunic. And um, so that hood then also has on it ram's ears, it has salmon leather, coxcomb. Um, so again, things that are pretty specific to Viking culture. Um, I actually didn't really know about salmon leather until this production. Uh, and, and that was, you know, a very interesting area to discover. In the scene with the queen, um, Queen Guthrin, when she is at Dropsy and she is with her chambermaids and, and she's getting dressed and her pleated shift, again, excess, her pleated shift is being dropped over her head and, and as it falls, we see her legs that, are, that have thigh-high red nail-bound socks. Um, and so nail binding is the, is the precursor to knitting. And we see examples, I think that there are, are potentially some uh, Egyptian examples, but there's also a sock at, at um, York. Um, and so this again is a very special and particular um, construction technique. Uh, unlike knitting, if you make a hole in your nail bound sock, it doesn't run, it just kind of uh, felts over. They made 13 berserker um, headdresses and um, they, uh, they fit one here in Belfast, but then when everything um, was locked down, they were unable to travel to Belfast once we resumed prep. So we had to finish everything um, here in Belfast in our, in our workshop, but um, they are um, really incredible pieces of, of costuming. The eyes for the berserkers are the animals, the, the wolves and the bears, are either ochre or green glass beads, uh, many of which I found in Rome. And um, except for one, uh, one eye for the, the berserker character, Erica uh, Blaze Eye, the actor playing that character used. Um, one of his own personal glass eyes for his own character. So his wolf had a plain gravel stone in one of the eyes. So there were really, really fun and lovely ways that we uh, made them more individual.